good day. Welcome to the Far Eastern University Public Intellectual Lecture Series. My name is Rita Cusho and I am from the Political Science Department. Our topic for today is fighting corruption through citizen action for accountability and democratic leadership, which is considered to be one of the major social concerns in the Philippines. And we are privileged to have a research fellow and advisor of the Accountability Research Center of the American University at Washington, D.C., and the convener director of GWatch, Ms. Joy Aceron. Good day, ma'am. Magandang araw. Thank you for having me. And thank you also for accepting our invitation, ma'am. And the topic that we're going to discuss today, I'm pretty sure is very interesting because this is considered to be one of the major problems in the Philippines. But first, I would like to uh, ask you to share with our students the advocacy of this organization which you're heading, which is called GWatch. I will discuss more about GWatch as we continue with the conversation, uh, but just to briefly introduce the organization, GWatch started in 2000 in response to a um, plethora of corruption cases that came out at that time. And there was also a uh, huge call mm -hmm. for action, not just from government, but also from civil society. Mm -hmm. The idea of, of GWatch is enabling ordinary citizens mm -hmm to fight corruption, mm -hmm. um, considering that it's one of the major hindrances to development. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, mm -hmm. we've done several initiatives to promote transparency and accountability mm -hmm. in government through citizen monitoring, mm -hmm. through action research. Mm -hmm. um, we've just recently spun off into an account action research organization. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is to learn from the initiatives of the past, mm -hmm. Uh, the approaches and the strategies for citizen action that has been undertaken in the past and see which worked, which didn't work, for whom, for what goals, mm -hmm. and um, introduce new ways mm -hmm. in recognition of um, the challenge of uh, the, the, the prevailing citizen action in the country mm -hmm. where you have um, uh, a strong disinterestedness mm -hmm. and also a pushback from uh, powerful forces mm -hmm. and the same, the same problems. Mm -hmm coming out mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also affecting the lives of people. Mm -hmm. The question is, okay, we've been doing citizen action for mm -hmm. the longest time in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, we invented people power. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several movements. Mm -hmm. So what What now? Mm -hmm. It's still the same problem of poverty. It's still the same problem mm -hmm. of inequality, same problem of corruption. Mm -hmm. So how can we address this and what kind of citizen action would mm -hmm. actually address the new development challenges of today. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've um, uh, rebooted into an action research organization mm -hmm. in collaboration with the Accountability Research mm -hmm. Center, where I also mm -hmm. uh, am part of as a research fellow. I see. It is interesting to note that uh, the GWatch is born out of that historical period where we were transitioning from the Estrada administration to the Arroyo administration, and we said that corruption was rampant then as it is now. And this is the reason why you decided to come up no, with this organization. Um, and so let's talk about corruption. Because I remember that uh, when I asked students what they think is the root cause of, the, of poverty in the Philippines, the number one at answer would always be corruption. Uh, can you please elaborate on this concept so that we are on the same page as to what it is? And why do you think is it still happening in the Philippines? Um, defining corruption is hard. Uh, there has been a lot of attempts to nuance the definition, but the simple definition of corruption is that it's the use of public means for private gains. Uh, the, it, it, it is premised on the, the philosophy that public office is a public trust, mm -hmm. and therefore those who are occupying office mm -hmm. are supposed to use their power, their authority, their resources mm -hmm. for public good only to address collective problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, corruption is when that public means, that mm -hmm. power, that authority, that resources are actually used for private gains. Mm -hmm. Private meaning it doesn't yield to benefit of common good or general welfare, doesn't yield to benefit of the collective, but instead it yields uh, to the benefit of uh, individuals, mm -hmm. of families, of uh, particularistic interests, mm -hmm. and that's uh, when you say you have um, uh, corruption in simple terms. Mm -hmm. uh, for the second question as to 
this is the more I think the harder part of it mm -hmm. um, in the Philippines because of um, the uh, prevalence of corruption mm -hmm. it's it's it has it's, it has turned almost into a norm mm -hmm. so just to give you an example of how of that illustrates how it has been normalized mm -hmm. in Philippine political culture mm -hmm. in in Philippine political culture in the, we have what you call um, uh, SOP mm -hmm. which is uh, standard operating procedure mm -hmm. in in those among those who are involved in corruption they mm -hmm. would actually use SOP to refer to corruption I mean oh. these are kickbacks oh. okay. right Kaya yes. mm -hmm. in in for example in infrastructure projects mm -hmm. Uh, how much is SOP mm -hmm. means how much is kickback. Mm -hmm. So the term, mm -hmm. the use of language, which is referring to to something that is mm -hmm. normalizing mm -hmm. policy-wise and also as for as uh, what culture prescribes, mm -hmm. has been assimilated to refer mm -hmm. to something that's supposed to be unacceptable, which mm -hmm. is corruption. That's how it's it has turned into mm -hmm. something very ingrained in our mm -hmm. culture, which makes it really very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's everyday issue mm -hmm. in the Philippines affecting everyone. Mm -hmm. That's at the level of the people, but when you say also um, political corrupt mm -hmm. corruption, this mm -hmm. refers to those who are using, uh, who are trying to uh, um, acquire power, mm -hmm. uh, specific positions of authority, mm -hmm. so that they can use that to either um, um, gain mm -hmm. uh, benefits for them or provide benefits and due benefits mm -hmm. to 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 those who 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 they favor mm -hmm. so this this kind of political corruption is the, the bigger ones mm -hmm. involving multi-billion mm -hmm. uh, pesos affecting everyone mm -hmm. um, but um, it is cultural in a sense that mm -hmm. even in our language game mm -hmm. you can hear that it's already embedded okay. um, which makes it more mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. if you talk about um, um, corruption as cultural mm -hmm. You can trace it back to history. There, there will be some uh, um, political scientists, sociologists who would actually say that um, it, you can trace it back to the point, to the time when we were in a uh, we were a, 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 a under under foreign rule, mm -hmm. where those who are in government mm -hmm. as a form of protests mm -hmm. would uh, corrupt government mm -hmm. that is uh, being led mm -hmm. by foreigners mm -hmm. so this is one of the historical roots mm -hmm. that uh, has been documented in mm -hmm. in some of our textbooks mm -hmm. uh, looking into why we have corruption and mm -hmm. at for, for some for me I think looking into the condition of corruption in the country there is there is uh, wisdom in, in that in a sense that if people uh, think that they do not have they don't have control, they don't have mm -hmm. power over their lives and mm -hmm. that they eventually uh, work for few who mm -hmm. get everything, who, mm -hmm. who benefit from their, from their hard work. Mm -hmm. They tend to, as a sign of protest, mm -hmm. given culturally we are um, also keen to doing um, passive aggressive, mm -hmm. we tend to actually use whatever opportunity we have mm -hmm. to protests mm -hmm. uh, such kind of injustice that we're experiencing mm -hmm. and the uh, everyday politics mm -hmm. would show you that this is still happening mm -hmm. uh, right now where small uh, civil servants mm -hmm. who are probably complaining about mm -hmm. uh, very little income as against the politicians who are actually getting mm -hmm. a lot of money mm -hmm. would use whatever mm -hmm. little power they have to actually get what mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. um, this this explains the small everyday corruption that we we see that is mm -hmm. also rampant you know the kickbacks mm -hmm. that's very common in the bureaucracy mm -hmm. um, and has become a norm in in the case of the political corruption as, as i as i mentioned it's this uh, um, the corruption being the fuel mm -hmm. for people to be in power mm -hmm. and that uh, the reason for people to stay in power mm -hmm. to actually acquire power mm -hmm. and in the history of the philippines we have you know, very few mm -hmm. who've actually kept power for a very long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with the fact that um, running elections in the Philippines is mm -hmm. really very expensive. Mm -hmm. So you need a lot of money to actually mm -hmm. acquire positions of power. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get that, mm -hmm. 
they justify getting or stealing mm -hmm. money from government to be able to stay in in their in their position mm -hmm. and they further justify it by saying that we're actually giving patronage to mm -hmm. poor and uh, and the poor is consenting mm -hmm. or legitimizing our corruption uh, by voting for us mm -hmm. uh, and by accepting bribe whenever mm -hmm. or uh, whenever we buy their votes during mm -hmm. election so this this uh, vicious cycle yes. that happens mm -hmm. over and over again mm -hmm. where we actually get to elect um, of, uh, government officials mm -hmm. who would justify stealing money mm -hmm. from public coffers because that's their way of staying in power mm -hmm. which people legitimize by get, getting them elected in office over and mm -hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. And with our justice system and accountability system being very weak, mm -hmm. It's uh, some uh, political science would call our um, our state a weak state mm -hmm. in a sense that we are unable to implement mm -hmm. laws and policies that are supposed to regulate mm -hmm. um, interactions of mm -hmm. um, interest and mm -hmm. uh, people. Being a weak state, one mm -hmm. of the weakest actually in, mm -hmm. in our system is the justice and the accountability yes. system. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we have almost an as a culture of impunity. It's actually mm -hmm. a state of impunity where those mm -hmm. who are um, stealing money from mm -hmm. uh, from public uh, public coffers mm -hmm. who are doing corruption mm -hmm. are not put uh, uh, are not put to jail, are mm -hmm. not held to account. Mm -hmm. uh, there are there have been instances where we actually our justice system actually worked. Mm -hmm. We were able to um, put in jail a a, a president mm -hmm. uh, who eventually two presidents, <laughs> two presidents. <laughs> yes. two uh, the first president eventually uh, um, uh, uh, was uh, granted um, pardon, pardon yes. and the other one uh, her cases were uh, or, speaker of the house uh, he, he eventually <laughs> became the speaker of the house uh -huh. so uh, you, you can see that there were instances where it actually worked but uh, there is a way for the system mm -hmm to bring back still mm -hmm. those who hold power and it has mm -hmm. a lot to do with power very much concentrated in the hands of very few people who are connected one way or another mm -hmm. and protecting their backs as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. All right, you have uh, mentioned two big words I think here no? um, and I'm afraid that some of our students who are non-political science majors might have a difficulty in understanding. So can you please elaborate on that very powerful statement that you've made on the fact that the Philippines is already in a state of impunity yes. and that we have very weak justice and accountability system, mm -hmm. which is a component of that weak state. Can you please elaborate on that for on la in layman's terms? Yes. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you use the term weak state, mm -hmm. um, it's referring to the capacity mm -hmm. of the state to implement its laws, mm -hmm. to put it simply. Mm -hmm. So you have a strong state if it, the, your government has mm -hmm. the capacity to implement its own laws, mm -hmm. particularly regulating um, uh, vested interests, yes. those uh, power, those entities at the private sector with with power mm -hmm. to actually undermine uh, regulatory frameworks, regulatory laws, and policies. So your state is weak if it's unable to regulate this interest and implement its own laws mm -hmm. and in the philippines including of course um generating its resources through taxation etc mm -hmm. um and in the philippines uh, literature of political science would say that we have a weak state mm -hmm. uh, and has a lot to do with how our state has developed mm -hmm. over uh during the colonial period mm -hmm. and eventually uh, up to now, mm -hmm. uh, being controlled by powerful interests, mm -hmm. it hasn't been able to develop mechanisms that would push back against particularistic interests to assert common good and mm -hmm. general welfare. So that's the weakness of the state. And specifically, when you talk about state, it has different machineries. Mm -hmm. right? It has, um, it, uh, it, um, it is supposed to. It's, it's government is part of it, and one aspect of that is the justice and the accountability mm -hmm. system. Justice system, uh, which is supposed to make sure that the laws are implemented. Mm -hmm. Accountability system, which is supposed to make sure that uh, exercise of power, every exercise of power in public office, has a corresponding mm -hmm. accountability. Mm -hmm. So it's we we often would mm -hmm. say in GWatch that accountability is the other side of power mm -hmm. in a democracy wherein you every exercise of power mm -hmm. 
has to be accounted for in a democratic system because public mm -hmm. office is public trust. Those accountability system, uh, including the office of the ombudsman, mm -hmm. the commission on human rights, the commission on audit, mm -hmm. those that are checking power mm -hmm. are actually very weak in many, many ways. Weak, uh, practical, practical wise, because they don't have resources, mm -hmm. they don't have, um, uh, they lack staff, they lack mm -hmm. budget, um, and also in terms of teeth. Mm -hmm. Meaning they cannot really enforce whatever whatever decisions they mm -hmm. make, so it can overrule. It can be overruled. Mm -hmm. Our justice system is, of course, the courts and, mm -hmm. and up to the Supreme Court, and uh, they are supposed to uh, enforce mm -hmm. the the laws. And um, as you as we noted earlier, um, there have been a lot of corruption cases mm -hmm. and allegations, but uh, that are filed in the in the courts, mm -hmm. but none of none of that actually saw a finality of decision mm -hmm. that you know that would actually scare mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. um, future uh, um, politicians mm -hmm. or those who would exercise power so this is what I, I mean when I say we are in a state of impunity mm -hmm. within um, you have existing mechanisms mm -hmm. and we are actually considered as best practice in the mm -hmm. world when it comes to um, corruption mm -hmm. prevention mm -hmm. and the fight for corruption. Our procurement law that mm -hmm. avoids corruption in the procurement is mm -hmm. considered as a, a state of the art mm -hmm. internationally mm -hmm. because of the safeguards that it has mm -hmm. to avoid corruption. But despite of all of that, I mean, mm -hmm. all these mechanisms from the Constitution, from mm -hmm. various laws, uh, including um, specific laws that mm -hmm. actually govern the, the practices of, of, mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, bureaucrats and the mm -hmm. civil servants, um, and of course the different institutions, you are still unable to really stop and mm -hmm. uh, 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 avoid corruption. And um, that's, I think, the puzzle. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the weakness of the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, we, if, if we look at um, mm -hmm. some of um, um, the different political scientists have studied mm -hmm. this, uh, they would say that uh, one, one issue is uh, you know, that we have political dynasties mm -hmm. who hold power and where the assumption that the state has more power mm -hmm. so that it can discipline and regulate mm -hmm. any interest outside the state mm -hmm. or in the civil society is not being, uh, it's not the reality in the mm -hmm. Philippines because you have specific entities that are more powerful, that are mm -hmm. actually in the government, making use of government to assert and advance their interests. Mm -hmm. And therefore, and because you have this monopoly of power mm -hmm. in some specific uh, entities mm -hmm. and fam like fa political families, it undermines how you mm -hmm. undertake accountability, how you hold um, uh, power, the mm -hmm. exercise of power mm -hmm. to, to account. So in, the, mm -hmm. in that sense, that's the state of impunity mm -hmm. and the kind of weaknesses in our justice and accountability system that we have in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, it, it's interesting to note that when we try to uh, ec um, to let the justice system roll and mm -hmm. you know put people, uh, plunderers, in, in prison, some factions in our society will say that these actions are simply politically motivated mm -hmm. and they are not actually the, the rule of law, no? yes. uh, in tr uh, being triumphant no? and we finding justice no? for, the, for the ill behavior of our politicians. So why is it that that is the general perception of many people that, uh, this, that, this, uh, you know, that trying to exact accountability from these officials are just what, purely politically motivated? How, how would you explain that kind of mindset? By and large, I, I think there's still a very high um, distrust mm -hmm. of the public towards uh, government. I, I, I think, um, especially the justice system. Mm -hmm. uh, because every day, every Filipinos experience that uh, the, the, your, your judiciary, your courts, would favor those who have means. Mm -hmm. If you look at the practical, the operational side of it, because it's, it requires a lot of money mm -hmm. to actually um, file your case mm -hmm. and make sure that it actually gets a final decision. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like the only way to acquire justice in the mm -hmm. Philippines is that if you, if you actually have money. Mm -hmm. um, and because of this everyday experience of mm -hmm. Filipinos on the justice system mm -hmm. that um, tanging ang may mga pera, mm -hmm. ang may nakaka nakakakamit ng justicia, mm -hmm. this kind of a mindset mm -hmm. 
or this kind of experience, everyday experience of the Filipinos, um, is also affecting how they view accountability and how uh, and how they view the justice process. Mm -hmm. I think it, the the judicial process. I think it's um, they would always think that it's just, um, you know, it's it's just a case of one interest mm -hmm. uh, trying to. Uh, uh, politicize mm -hmm. the justice and accountability mm -hmm. system to get to get back at another mm -hmm. powerful interest so it's just a it's just politics that's, mm -hmm. that's and that's the difficult thing about accountability mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the challenge because of uh, this assumption that mm -hmm. it's actually just not a a process that involves the people but it actually uh, it's just a process that involves powerful mm -hmm. few who are competing for power so it's mm -hmm. just a um, elite Elite mm -hmm. intra intra elite competition, intra elite uh -huh. conflict, mm -hmm. which you know you can trace back to again to that kind of uh, political structure that we have, where the power is really in the hands of very few, and that those who actually get to jail eventually uh, get out of jail. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of cycle is also perpetuating that mindset mm -hmm. that no, this is not real justice system. This is not just this is not justice. It's not the common good that mm -hmm. is uh, being uh, taken into account in in the decision making. But instead, it's just interests mm -hmm. that are competing and are are actually. Um, uh, being motivated mm -hmm. to to hold interest mm -hmm. to account. I, I guess this kind of um, problem undermines also accountability. Mm -hmm. And um, as I mentioned, the cultural aspect makes yes. makes accountability and the fight mm -hmm. uh, against corruption harder. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot blame the people for thinking mm -hmm. this way. It's it's an experience that they have for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you know um, instances where it worked. Mm -hmm and make it known to the people so that they probably could see. Uh, another is, I think, political maturity. Yes. I mean, you know, vested interest, going mm -hmm. after each other, go, going after uh, each other to actually um, um, gain power is a given. Mm -hmm. The question is, what, what are the facts, mm -hmm. right? I mean, what, what really happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, the ability of the Filipinos to look at the facts mm -hmm. And the ability of our system to actually inform people of the facts mm -hmm. would be, I think, one way to make sure that you build, you build trust. Mm -hmm. So transparency, that's where transparency comes in mm -hmm. and participation as well. Mm -hmm. How do we create people, um, make people understand mm -hmm. um, uh, what, how justice system works and what kind of facts are there in every case mm -hmm. that are put into, into um, the process? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so thank you for that because I've taken note that it's a problem of the low social trust that Filipinos have towards the government and our justice system, right? And then it's also an issue of political maturity. So that brings me to um, to the next question, which is actually uh, I, I'm familiar with this uh, Transparency International and these other indices, no, uh, worldwide, and I just want you to please elaborate on how the Philippines is faring as far as these indices are concerned? Um, if you look at the uh, Transparency International Index, um, and uh, this is being done by an organization, international organization, that actually measures corruption mm -hmm. uh, through perception surveys. Mm -hmm. um, we, have not, uh, we have not improved mm -hmm. generally. So mm -hmm. we've, we've we had a significant improvement uh, from 2010 to 2015 because mm -hmm. that's how, how the Transparency Corruption Perception Index works mm -hmm. is that they rank the country mm -hmm. from uh, those who have um, those who are uh, least corrupt to mm -hmm. most corrupt. So the, mm -hmm. the, if, you, if you are uh, first, second, third, mm -hmm. if you're at the top of the ranking, mm -hmm. it means you're, 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 you have little to no corruption. Mm -hmm. And these are usually the countries, Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. so like Denmark is number mm -hmm. one. Um, and then if you're below uh, the ranking, you're ranking all countries. Mm -hmm. If you're below the ranking, it means you, your mm -hmm. corruption is, uh, is worse mm -hmm. than other countries. Mm -hmm. So in the Philippines, if you look at the ranking, we were ranking, um, our standing was at 134. Mm -hmm. uh, out of? Out of 168. Uh -huh. uh, 160, 168. So it changed, it, it, the, the number of countries that they looked into mm -hmm. var, var, varies as well mm -hmm. as, as every, every year. 
or mm -hmm. every period. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in 2010, we were 134. Mm -hmm. We improved a lot from 2010 to 2015. Mm -hmm. So 2015, that was the, in a way, if you look, if you look at, um, if you study our corruption prevention mm -hmm. and our fight against corruption in the Philippines, there's really been a big improvement uh, from uh, 2010 to mm -hmm. 2015. At that mm -hmm. time, you, we, I, I would always say that the Philippines was the rock star in the international community because mm -hmm. they would um, say that, ah, oh, the Philippines is, uh, in, uh, the growth rate of the Philippines is increasing. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, transparency, participation, accountability initiatives mm -hmm. being undertaken in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. our, our, our perception, corruption perception index, our democracy mm -hmm. index, freedom index, all of that yeah. are actually very high mm -hmm. and improving. And same, actually, mm -hmm. in, in cor cor corruption perception index, we improved our ranking in 2015. And then it went down again in 2016, uh, mm -hmm. from 95 to 101 mm -hmm. uh, in 2016, and then went up again in 2017. Meaning, when mm -hmm. you say you 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 went up, meaning you your corruption mm -hmm. worsened. Um, it slightly improved mm -hmm. in 2018, meaning mm -hmm. we uh, we went uh, down again, uh, mm -hmm. which improved our corruption perception. Uh, the, the corruption mm -hmm. perception index. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we will be able to maintain such that we are mm -hmm. able to achieve the previous mm -hmm. improvement or standing we had in 2015. Mm -hmm. So this, what does this mean? Um, it's a perception index. Mm -hmm. So it, they survey um, stakeholders mm -hmm. and experts on corruption. So it, there is no um, actual measurement mm -hmm. of corruption, I mean, the extent of it. There are different studies on mm -hmm. sectors, on specific processes like the mm -hmm. procurement, so you have statistics on that. But uh, this is already ex the, the one that is most accepted mm -hmm. in a way worldwide, which affects policy making. Mm -hmm. um, um, still not 100%, mm -hmm. also because um, it's perception, mm -hmm. and a lot of things affect perception. But more or less, we're saying that um, we need to do more, mm -hmm. and that uh, um, since we are mm -hmm. we are still at the 99 mm -hmm. out of 180, that's not that's not very bad. But yeah. at the same time, it's if you look at the regional average, yes. the regional mm -hmm. average mm -hmm. is 44. So mm -hmm. the regional average that is that's a regional average uh -huh. points. Uh, the regional average points is 44. And uh, our average, our point is 36, so we are mm -hmm. still below the yeah, regional average. regional yes. average as well. And that that's referring to uh, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, where you have also countries that are very corrupt. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to be done in terms of comparatively our efforts to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. So what are the dominant or the well-known uh, corruption cases that could have affected our ranking in those mm -hmm. uh, indices? Um, since this is 2018, um, mm -hmm. that's 2017. So we look at the if if we look at 2017, 2017, mm -hmm. 2018, because 2017 our ranking mm -hmm. uh, got wor uh, uh, became worse, mm -hmm. which means that people think that um, there is more corruption mm -hmm. from 2016 to 2017. Mm -hmm. There was a change in administration at the time, so that's a very important index. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of policymakers. Internationally, mm -hmm. this is also influencing mm -hmm. investments, etc. Mm -hmm. So they are looking into this, and um, I can, if you look at the news right now, there almost every day mm -hmm. you would see a lot of reports. Mm -hmm. On one hand, you would say this is a good thing because Commission on Audit is doing its job. Yes. Uh, most of the reports that are being reported by media, mm -hmm. most of the f corruption findings being reported by media, mm -hmm. are uh, actually reports coming from the Commission on Audit. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is another challenge with the reporting of on corruption in the mm -hmm. Philippines because uh, findings of commis the Commission on Audit can mm -hmm. be explained. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's no assurance that if a finding of the Commission on Audit mm -hmm. is actually published mm -hmm. or reported by media mm -hmm. that those who are involved would mm -hmm. actually be held to account. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't necessarily, so the tracking of these corruption cases mm -hmm. 
it, it's not it's not being done. So there there are a lot of instances and specific cases mm -hmm. of corruption. You have the fill health, mm -hmm. the overcharging of fill health, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, corruption in the cure customs, which is common. That yes. has been uh, there several. Just mm -hmm. yesterday, there there was also a report of um, the. Uh, medicines in uh, medicines that are expired mm -hmm. which you could say is that corruption or is that inefficiency mm -hmm. but if, if it's actually public goods that are not being utilized mm -hmm. by the public because somebody else didn't do do his or her job that's yeah. corruption mm -hmm. and um, so it, you could actually mm -hmm. trace it back to corruption there are other several cases as well mm -hmm. um, there the media the media is actually doing a mm -hmm. very good job in terms of um, the crunching data, mm -hmm. uh, particularly on reports. And um, one specific report um, done by the, by Rappler studying commission on audit, uh, commission on audit um, findings saw that um, at least half of the agencies mm -hmm. uh, are actually have actually some. Um, uh, uh, specific the term that they specifically term they put there is um, how doubtful accounts or excessive mm -hmm. spending. Mm -hmm. So that's that that, that shows you mm -hmm. uh, the extent of um, like irregularities mm -hmm. in 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 government. Mm -hmm. um, so this this uh, issues mm -hmm. probably affected one that would always be pointed out by international media would mm -hmm. be this case of. Um, uh, the officials uh, being removed from office mm -hmm. because of a corruption allegation, mm -hmm. but getting reappointed mm -hmm. after some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one report, I think the, the last one was done by Vera Files, showing that um, there was even a case where three officials got appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, three officials who were allegedly involved in mm -hmm. corruption uh, got uh, mm -hmm. sacked, but eventually got promoted mm -hmm. um, when they got back from when they got back to government. Mm -hmm. So um, all of that, of course, mm -hmm. affect af affect the per perception of people mm -hmm. when they when they get interviewed. Mm -hmm. Bribery that's hap that happens in, uh, between the government and the mm -hmm. business sector, or bribery in frontline frontline services, mm -hmm. would be others that actually affect also perception. So what what um, people would 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 um, experience mm -hmm. and would uh, hear would also affect uh, perception. So all of this, it's actually very much perception based. Mm -hmm. There, there are um, there are efforts by the ombudsman, for example, to look into corruption cases, um, specifically by both the local government units and the government. Mm -hmm national government agencies. Mm -hmm. So these are cases that g that are filed. Mm -hmm. And one important point here, I, I like this, it was presented to us uh, by the Department of Interior and Local Government in one forum. And I noticed that actually, um, if you look at the cases that are filed, mm -hmm. the national government agencies have more cases compared mm -hmm. to local government units. Mm -hmm. So it actually puts to question that mentality that mm -hmm. corruption happens at the local level. Mm -hmm. um, it may no, well, corruption happens nationwide, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, most of it, at, at least the ones mm -hmm. filed, involve the government government institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just curious because you have you have mentioned that uh, from 2010 to 2015, our standing in this in this is sort of improved. But this is also the time when we had these issues about the pork barrel fund, mm -hmm. right? And yes. the the Yolanda funds, right? That's right. Yeah. That's so right. how how do you ex how do you reconcile uh, that? 2015, no, nag-improve tayo. In interesting. Yeah. I think it was happening alongside each other efforts, okay. and um, it could be that at the international level, or mm -hmm. at least those stakeholders that are being um, uh, the being interviewed, mm -hmm. they they appreciated more um, the anti-corruption efforts. Remember that the okay. the. In terms of communication, mm -hmm. the previous administration was really running uh, under a platform of anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. So it probably helped in terms of perception that mm -hmm. you have that. But you could see mm -hmm. that what was affected by those corruption mm -hmm. cases that you're mentioning or allegations that you're mentioning, mm -hmm. su such as the Yolanda Fund, yeah. which recently actually um, some important um, uh, clarity has been mm -hmm. provided on that, and um, also in terms of the DAP. If you look at it, mm -hmm. it was more it, it affected more the elections. Yes. So that's 
you could say that this is partly a um, cases that were used by the incumbent mm -hmm. to question the credibility of mm -hmm. the of the of the previous the administration. administration. But whether it actually affected the indices, not yet. Mm. So it could actually be the one that is affecting the 2016, 2017. We don't mm. know because uh, they're, I'm, I'm not also sure if those who are be, of those being interviewed, they're actually particular about the, 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 the leadership mm -hmm. or the administration or there could be other considerations mm -hmm. as well.